with James Buster Douglas. Tyson announced today that he'll go 10 rounds with Henry Tillman on June 16th for $2 million. Tillman beat Tyson twice when they were amateurs trying to make the Olympic team back in 84. Tyson, hoping to use this fight to get another shot at Douglas, says he means business. I even gave him my best hobby, women, you know what I mean? You know? <laughs> no more, you know what I mean? A, you know, a kiss now and then, you know what I mean? I feel efficient, but other than that, I'm just training. The Tyson Tillman fight in Las Vegas is part of a fight card that includes 42 year old George Foreman, also against Brazil's Adelson Rodriguez. Foreman says he wants a shot at the heavyweight title and he'd be willing to fight Tyson along the way, along with Evander Holyfield, and anybody else. Why? Oh, even the Holyfield is fighting some guy somewhere for a couple of bucks when he can make the same date, he could have made the same date with George Foreman for 15 million bucks. Here's my proof. The rainmaker himself, Bob Aaron, would have offered a 15 million dollar purse. Why is Mike Tyson fighting uh, uh, Henry Tillman for a few bucks when he can be fighting George Foreman for another 15 million or so, 20 million bucks, right? This old man is back. The sucker is back. Go tell the whole world that I will fight anybody at any time, but some people won't fight me no time. King Kong is back. Don't get excited. <laughs> some things never change, and old George will have to stay away from those chocolate chip cookies that he was holding. Buster does. How does the show look to you so far? Well, Larry. I'd call the show pretty easy. So far, the audience has been able to take everything that the cash has dished in. If we look at the tail of the videotape, we'll see that the audience outnumbers the cast 30 to 1. <laughs> That's uh, Tommy Davidson playing Leonard and David Allen Greer interviewing him. Brilliant, brilliant. It's now tell show. me about the Mike Tyson impression. Here. Well, uh, you know, this is a, sort of a parody of a, of a syndicated show called Love Connection. The Love Chuck Connection. Woolery. Oh, yeah. And on this, uh -huh. on this bit, Mike and Robin Gibbons are appearing together. Mike Tyson, Robin Gibbons uh, on in, Lo in Living Color on The Love Connection. Take a look. Well, Robin, last time you were here, you picked a man to go out with. Now you're back to tell us how it went. Let's say hello to Mike Tyson. And of course, things didn't go very well because he's just a boxer from Brooklyn. And of course, I was a Harvard medical student. What about you, Mike? What did you think of Robin? Oh, well, Chuck, when I first saw Robin, I was ecstatic. I mean, she had this, she had this really tight dress on, you know, the kind with the push-up bra, and her breasts were like popping right out, like hitting right in the eye, you know? If, if Mike Tyson was watching, I thought that was a disgusting <laughs> I really did. No, look, look. Every major fight in the 80s was on HBO. Leonard, her. Left hand sends her back against the ropes again. And that's all. It's over. Brian Aguayo. Nice right hand. Man's helpless against the ropes. Hagler, her. This may be the most brutal even round you've ever seen in boxing. Home speaks. Speaks in a world of trouble right now. Hagler, Leonard. Left hand down to his side. The tradition continues with Chavez, Taylor, and the biggest upset in history, Tyson Douglas. Mike Tyson has been knocked out. It's simple. The best fighters fighting the best fights. HBO Boxing is simply the best. It's been lying low after lying on the canvas courtesy of a Buster Douglas punch. This weekend, the former champ will fight to regain a measure of respect. Also, another chance to win back his crown. Charlie Steiner has the story of a man who hopes to play the heavy again. The familiar sockless black shoes of Mike Tyson are back in the gym. And so are his fast hands on the speed bag. And his relentless power while sparring 
as he prepares for his comeback match with Henry Tillman, who defeated Tyson twice back in 1984 when both were fighting for a berth on the U.S. Olympic team. This will be their first meeting in the ring since then. Mike Tyson, who turns 24 in three weeks, gets back into the ring this Saturday night for the first time since he saw stars in the land of the rising sun, courtesy of a crushing right hand issued by James Buster Douglas. Despite the loss, Mike Tyson remains one of the most watched and most curious athletes in all of sport. They want to see me self-destruct. They want to see me one day with handcuffs and walking in the police cars going to jail on, uh, like they like you seen Marlon Brando's son. People, they love seeing him. Look, this is what I told you. I told you he's headed for that. I told you he's headed for that. You know what I mean? But the, the objective, my objective of life and my sole um, success is that I'm, I'm successful, that I'm not in jail and I'm not in Brownsville anymore and I, and I beat all the odds. A lot has changed in the life of Mike Tyson since then. His sister died within weeks of the fight and his girlfriend gave birth to his son, D'Amato Tyson. Personally, it's just had a big effect on you. It's just that you, when you, when you come home or something, and you see him, I mean, you just look and you get goofy, you know what I mean? You're totally out of character then, you know what I mean? And, just, and it, um, that individual, that life that brings you to that. Has it mellowed you? Man, I, 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 I don't think so. But there's been a significant change in the professional life of Mike Tyson. His corner, which receives so much criticism in Tokyo, is under new management. The controversial and occasionally abrasive Richie Giacchetti is now the captain of the ship, leaving Jay Bright and Aaron Snoll demoted to first mates. Tyson has remained philosophical about his tarnished trip to Tokyo, so much so that during a recent autograph session, he wasn't the least bit reluctant to autograph a magazine cover, showing him in a professionally compromising position. I said, all right, I'm looking at the fight. Oh, I got my ass kicking, I'm out of here. I'm going back outside or something else. I'm going to get something to eat else. I'm driving my car, oh, it's lost. I don't look at it as, oh God, and I'm dwelling. What's that loss? And it's, well, not train. I'll go back training in a month or two. While admitting to be 25 pounds overweight just three weeks prior to his loss to Douglas in Tokyo, Mike Tyson appears to be fit for his comeback fight this Saturday night. Once viewed as invincible, Iron Mike suddenly became vulnerable after being floored by Buster Douglas. This weekend, at the ripe old age of 23, the former heavyweight champ begins his comeback against Henry Tillman. Recently, Tyson looked back with Charlie Steiner at that fateful day in Tokyo. Have you watched the tape of the Douglas fight at all? I've the fight a couple of times. Is that you in the ring when you see I don't it? even know that guy. I don't even know. That guy borrowed my belt and my, my body is in the ring. I do not know who that guy is. They say that defeat builds character. And then you're able to refocus and redirect. Did that ha did it maybe in the long run have a positive effect on you? Well, yeah, I mean, the idea of you know, being defeated and and embarrassed, you would say, and like in front of a hundred million people, you know, you know, you're feeling, you're like, God, oh, Christ, let's go home. And the first thing you want to do is just go home and just rest, you know, because you're very tired, and especially after a long f plane ride. And on that long plane ride, you do a lot of um, thinking. You know what I mean? You don't sleep, you just do a lot of thinking. So you don't have you don't have much time to just say, well. This is what happened. This one, you thought everything out over that 12 or 14 hour plane ride. And so you just, you're already all cried out, so you don't even think about the issue no more. You're ready to go on with your life. What like the that, day is over. What was that plane ride like for you? Longest 12, 14 hours yeah. of your life? No, man, I think it went too fast. Yeah. I didn't want to stay in the air for a little bit longer. What were you thinking? I mean, what were those immediate thoughts in there on the way home? I said, thank God, now, how am I going to get this tighter back? First thing comes to mind, I gotta get this title back. I never thought about like God, I'm beat up and I lost, and what I'm gonna do. People are gonna, you know, perceive me as a certain this and this and that. I used to kind, I'm gonna get this title back. Where are you now, as compared to eight or ten months ago, as a fighter in your head? Yeah, I mean, I'm more together. You know, I mean, it's gonna be very difficult to say I'm a better fighter than I was ten months ago. I was a year ago. But you know, I'm more together, more focused on the issue that you know you have to fight and I have to win. I want my title back.
big heavyweight bouts. Former champ Mike Tyson will take on Henry Tillman. And that up-and-coming 41-year-old George Foreman continues his comeback against Brazilian Adelson Rodriguez. Angelo Dundee trying to mess me up, feeding me. Every chance he sees me, he gives me something to eat. So that I'll be so overweight that this man is going to run me down to the ground. That's what he thinks. But when I miss Allison Rodriguez with my right hand, then my left, I'm going to belly bump him. <laughs> He's going to be in trouble. Holyfield, who is in Las Vegas to watch uh, tomorrow night's doubleheader heavyweight bouts, uh, has fired his manager, Ken Sanders. Now, the move comes less than a week after Holyfield landed a shot at champion Buster Douglas. That'll be coming up in September. The two apparently were growing apart, had a dispute, so the business de decision was made by Holyfield. Sanders had been with Holyfield his entire professional career. Well, the stage is set for tomorrow night's heavyweight doubleheader in Vegas. The action at Caesars Palace will feature former heavyweight kingpins Mike Tyson and George Foreman. Now, they may square off against these others sometime in the near future, but for now, they'll share center stage as they set out to get a little closer to a shot at the title. Friday's weigh-in showed Iron Mike to be lean and mean. He's ready. Tyson stepping back into the ring for the first time since losing to Buster Douglas back in February. Tipped the scales at a trim 217. That's three and a half pounds lighter than for Douglas. Henry Tillman, who beat Tyson twice as an amateur, looked a little bit pudgy, but is actually lighter than Tyson at 215. Tillman's a former gold medal winner. He's had a disappointing pro career thus far, but he's anxious to turn it around and play a little ping pong on Tyson's head. While Tillman sees a win, the current champion says anything can happen. Basically, I'm determined going into this fight, period, because I'm a very competitive person, and everything I do, I try my 110% best to win. Whether it's just playing a game of table tennis, which I'm going to try my best to win. So I'm going in definitely with win on my mind. I mean, you guys should be able to realize now that hell, he might be able to fight this guy. You know, <laughs> it might, we don't know what to expect anymore. I mean, the 90s came in with the biggest upset in boxing history. The other bout isn't expected to last long either. It's Big George. Definitely hasn't missed the dinner bell of late. Foreman came in at a rotund 263. That is 44 pounds heavier than his opponent, Adelson Rodriguez. And they'll box again Saturday. Don't forget, coming up at 9 p.m. Eastern Time, Saturday night, full half-hour special on The Fallen Champ. It's the Mike Tyson story with Nick and Fred, our CNN Sports Special. And that wraps up this edition of Sports Late Night. We've got... Iron Mike Tyson returns to the ring for the first time since going down in the biggest upset in history. He has something to prove against Henry Tillman. George Foreman continues his drive towards destiny, taking on top contender Adelson Rodriguez. HBO Sports presents the boxing doubleheader of the year. Iron Mike Tyson, George Foreman. Live Saturday, June 16th, 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific. HBO Boxing is simply the best. In Caesars Palace, Las Vegas, a couple of former champs hit the ring in separate bouts. Mike Tyson will fight for the first time since losing to Buster Douglas in Tokyo. Tyson, who weighed in at 217, will duke it out with old nemesis Henry Tillman. Tillman beat Tyson twice when both were amateurs. He's got a 20-4 and four mark, but no real punching power to knock Tyson down this evening. And the lead-in bout has former champ 42-year-old George Foreman against Adelson Rodriguez of Brazil at a 10-rounder. Big George tipped the scales at 263. He's 66 and 2 overall and 21 and 0 since coming out of retirement. But Rodriguez is considered the best opponent Foreman has faced in his comeback. Fan, tonight is your night. Las Vegas is the place. You could well call this the biggest boxing night of the year, with uh, emphasis on the word big. Certainly. Mike Tyson and George Foreman fighting on the same card, fighting their way back on what could well be a collision course with each other. With more on the road back, here's Charlie Steiner in Las Vegas. Welcome back to Caesars Palace in Las Vegas. We're just a matter of hours away now from the road back, the doubleheader involving George Foreman and Adelson Rodriguez, Mike Tyson and Henry Tillman. You know Wally Matthews, the ESPN boxing analyst. Of course, you know the WBA and the WBC number one contender, Evander Holyfield. Evander, three hours before a fight, what is going through a fighter's mind and your belly? What, what, what are you thinking about now? Actually, uh, you, your mind give you the rundown, have you been in, I haven't been doing the proper thing, like you're running, are you in the best shape possible, and you're pretty much like, uh, pretty much in your mind thinking about what you're going to do in the ring when you get there, you're pretty much programming yourself for what actually is going to happen. Let's talk about the two fights, first the Foreman and Rodriguez fight, you took out Rodriguez in Lake Tahoe, what do you remember about him and what is Foreman going to have to do tonight? 
What I remember about Rodriguez is a very quick-handed fighter. Uh, he, caught, he caught me off surprise with his hand speed, and he threw pretty good combinations. And I know that his strength wasn't inside fight, he couldn't fight inside. So I feel for sure for him to win, he would have to take him to the inside or be able to trap him in the corner to make him uh, fight inside fight. An interesting question Charlie raised about what goes through a fighter's mind just before a fight. What must be going through the mind of Mike Tyson coming off that loss in Tokyo? This is the first time he's getting back in the ring, and even though Tillman isn't really considered much of a threat, I think that Tyson's got to feel a little apprehension. Yes, yes. I, I, I would feel that he would feel that way because there's so much pressure on Tyson because he, ha he has blown everybody out, and all of a sudden he gets blown up. So coming into this fight, he know he has to have a sensation fight for people to believe that he's back. And the uh, only thing I can feel that could hurt him is that he's going out and trying to knock Henry out first so fast that he can get out there and fight very reckless and get caught with a shot and get knocked out himself. You really think Henry has the possibility or the talent to do that to Mike Tyson? Well, Henry beat him twice, and Henry is a very young fighter and a very confident fighter. And, he, and Henry really feels right now at this time, this is a way that he can creep to the championship again. Mike weighed in at 217 pounds yesterday. That's even lighter than perhaps his best performance against Michael Spence. What did his weight tell you? Well, to me, it, it, it displayed that the man is in great shape. And um, and that's the only thing that's indicated that the man is in good shape and the man in good spirit. Vander Holyfield, thank you for joining us. And Wally Matthews, our ESPN boxing analyst. Don't forget, immediately after the fight tonight, we'll be live with all the highlights and photographs and analysis. For now, let's go back to sports center. Okay, Charlie. Feature later tonight at Caesars, Foreman and Tyson and our own twin bill of Fred Ekman and Nick Charles are at the Las Vegas show place with the latest. Fred and Nick. Well, thank you very much, Gary. We finally moved out into the backyard out after being out in front all week long. It certainly looks like a championship fight night here. A lot of the stars have showed up, although, of course, no titles are on the line as far as we're concerned. But it is hot. 91 degrees right now, Nick. Finally, fight night, though. We've seen George Foreman delight us all week with his antics and his uh, eating uh, habits and his girth <laughs> and his 263 pounds. And Mike Tyson, as the fight drew, draws nearer and nearer, put on his game face, certainly at yesterday's weigh-in. But you never know how either guy is going to react. I've been to a lot of fights and you see people there sometimes they look downright scared we won't know until they hit the ring and that's now a matter of hours of course we have a double header tonight and the uh, first fight of note is going to be a uh, big george foreman the punching preacher 41 years young you talked about how he's held court all week long and how he has eaten court all week long he's taking on adelson rodriguez it should be an interesting fight but george should have no problem i agree with you fred and i also think now with mike tyson that he step against henry tillman 29 years old a veteran tw uh, a guy who's been around the block a couple of times i think this is a con confidence builder, uh, particularly for Tyson. I think it's the kind of thing that, that Don King and the management thought that Tyson needs, certainly Mike Tyson, because what happened four months ago in Tokyo was not only shocking to us, but certainly humiliating. It was the darkest day in um, Mike Tyson's chapter as a fighter. It was a humbling experience, uh, the, the most humbling in Mike Tyson's professional career. Every now and then you need your ass whipped, you know what I mean? You get back on top of things. There is definitely a dent in the legend, and Mike Tyson knows it. And now that he's had four months to swallow the first loss of his professional career, he realizes it was almost inevitable. Well, you get sloppy more. Like, people say, um, Mike Tyson has all these personal problems and they don't affect him. But, you know, it's really not the personal problem. It's the aftermath of the personal problems. You know, things, you know, going to court and it um, forbids you from being active as possible and stuff. And then the longer you stay away from fighting, the, the long, it's harder it is to get back. When you're young and you're coming up, you're so full of life and enthusiasm, and you want to show the world you, what you know. And then once you get there, even more so, then it starts to die, and you lose perspective. And you start to do everything instinctively. You know what I mean? You lose the whole perspective of what it took you to get there. So Mike Tyson's gone back to work, trying to find the building blocks to put it all back together again. Physically, he's ready because emotionally his pride was burned and he doesn't want to ever get embarrassed again. I find it very difficult, it's very hard, like to go out somewhere and, I mean, because people don't look at it, for, oh, you lose, they look at it, wow, well, Mike, you know what I mean, what you are, who you are. And, you know, I like sometimes when I go, I like to get a pizza, I like to get the ice cream and go and walk the streets. You know, whoever, go out, and, and that's very, it's very uncomfortable, very difficult for me to do that. 
But Tyson says the worst part is having people feel sorry for him. The last thing he wants is pity. And he says the last thing he feels is pressure. Um, I was telling you, my girlfriend was telling me, she said, Mike, do you feel pressured? Mike, you're in a very pressured situation. Well, how do you deal with that? You know what I mean? And I was saying, even or not, that isn't, it affects certain people differently. And, you know, for not being champion, I feel a great deal of pressure taken off me, but you can still feel the aura around you, you know, when you walk the streets, you know what I mean? I never, I used to never think about it. You know what I mean? The pressure kicking you in the butt. But you want it back. Yeah. To get back the title, Tyson has to strip away some layers of ego and make the adjustments. And that takes wisdom to know if he's headed in the right direction and guts to jump off and do something about it if he's going the wrong way. But for now, when Mike Tyson talks about the realities of life in an unreal world of boxing, he sounds more believable. It's not the real world. We go, to, we go to work when we want to. We do when we want to. We get paid one night. We get paid. You know what I mean? We live, we live around for as long as we want to. You know, but you, and that, that's good. You know what I mean? It sounds good on paper. But the real objective is to take all of that, and then now you're ready for the world when it's all over. So if boxing burns character in the soul, then defeat reveals it. You know, um, it's funny because I really never know how much I like this sport until I lost. This is a hell of a game. This is a hell of a game, man. <laughs> well, we'll have more on the Mike Tyson story coming up at 9 o'clock Eastern time tonight. A half hour of interesting and provocative commentary from Mike and several other people around his camp. The Mike Tyson story, 9 o'clock Eastern time tonight. Okay, a boxing special, Fred. And then, of course, join us at 11.30 Eastern time, CNN Sports tonight for post-fight analysis. We'll hear from Mike Tyson and George Foreman on how they did or did not do it and be joined by number one heavyweight contender Evander Holofield to analyze what happened tonight. We think we know what's going to happen. I thought the same in Tokyo yeah. until we were all flabbergasted. Well, that's the wonderful thing about boxing. Everybody has a puncher's chance, and we're going to be here to bring you every little bit of it coming up later on tonight. Okay, so we'll see you from Las Vegas. That'll do it for, for now. From Caesars Palace, let's go back to Atlanta. His loss was boxing's greatest upset. Will he come back with the invincible aura he once had? Mike Tyson talks about his return, 9 Eastern tonight on CNN. You were born to win. Shot the world. Shot the world. Shot the world. Here is gone. CNN Sports presents the Mike Tyson story with your hosts, Nick Charles and Fred Hickman. Welcome to Las Vegas. I'm Nick Charles with Fred Hickman. We're in about two hours in the back parking lot of the stadium here at Caesars Palace. We'll find out a little bit more of what former heavyweight champion Mike Tyson's made of. But the reason we're here tonight is because of the shock of what happened four months ago in Tokyo, Fred. That's right, Tokyo, Japan. And, you know, really, in order to understand what's happening to Mike Tyson now, today, it's really imperative to understand what's happened to Mike Tyson at the hands of Buster Douglas. And who better to tell it than the two guys who lived it? He just can't cry with spilled milk. You know, I look at him laugh so bad. So I was like, you believe this? But once we got, once I got into the ring, it was, um, I knew it was on there. You know, and then it was just uh, staying in the game plan and, you know, just staying focused, you know, not being distracted. Physically in shape. I could have been in better shape psychologically. I bet. Michael in Tokyo, you, you could see, it was just a, a mental thing. Everything coming off that jab, be first. Don't sit back and let him hit you. I mean, no wait for a shot, you know. Attack him, attack him. You know, I think that was something that he hadn't been used to. You know, and it was just going in there and attacking him. You know, and keep him busy, you know. Just, you know, disregard, showing him no respect. You know, I wasn't prepared well, you know. And if I was, you know, I mean, psychologically at the part, you know, I mean, I was never um, went to those drastic means of looking for the one punch. But like I say, he fought a great fight. You can't take that away from him. I was working on him, and all I was doing was just staying focused on just, just firing on him. And like I said before the fight, you know, I was going to hit Mike, and I was going to hit him, you know, and see, you know, let him taste what I got, you know. 
and continuously hit him until he wasn't going to be there only when the fight was over. Try to do more punches. And, you know, basically, like I say, you, you, you can't say what you would have done because it's over with. You look at the film and say, up, oh, just slip through your fingers. Uh, every round was going to progressing. They were saying I was winning the fight, you know, and, and to, you know, um, just stay, stay with it, you know, stay with it and stay busy, you know, and keep your attention on what you're doing, you know, don't get caught up in, you know, stopping and looking back at your work. Well, in the eighth round, I think I got a little careless. You know, I was, I was doing well in the eighth round, uh, and then, no, he ducked. Yeah, he disappeared on me. I lost sight of him. You know, he kind of went down, and, you know, it was like trying to find him, and all of a sudden, it was, bam. And there's a right hand uppercut, and down goes Douglas. Just don't jump up. You pick up the count and find out what's going on, and then you got a little time, gather yourself, and then you get up. He's going to come. He's going to come out after your ass now, you know, and I know he was. You know, but then in the ninth, he came back out, and he, he even threw a good shot. I took it and, and came back responding with my own. But, you know, and then, and then it almost knocked him out in the ninth round. So what would happen? But I was just so totally spun. I was just, I had nothing left. And I said, well, I got to keep on fighting, hoping I catch him with another shot. But the objective you must have in your mind, you can never quit. That mustn't even end in your mind. No, the only time I think I got spent is when a knife, when I hit him with a right. shot, and I honestly knew that he was hurt. And then I kind of loaded up on the shot, and it just went to the ceiling because I missed him. And I think that was the one that kind of took a little bit out of me. I never have it in my mind to slip away. And I never, you, see, you just got to fight the last moment. You fight till you can't fight anymore. It was a war, you know. We were in that battle, and, and, um, and I was just continuing it, you know, fighting. And I made the move and got him with a good uppercut. What an uppercut by Douglas, and down goes Tyson. It's over. It's over. Mike Tyson has been knocked out. He's coming back hard every round. You know, he never, I never showed, he never showed weakness throughout the fight. You know, to where, you know, like someone was saying, you could have, it seemed like you could have got him in the fifth. But I just, I never seen it. You know, and I'm looking at the man. You know, he never showed where he was. You know, starting to falter. He just kept coming. But I know I'm a better fighter. I know I fought and beat better fighters. And. I, you know, it's just hard to talk about because I don't want to tarnish his victory, you know, because he did a good job. Well, I fought him, see, he experienced something he had never experienced before. You know, I fought Mike. Because you always say, you're the kind of guy you got to get hurt to learn this thing. Not even, but you, you shouldn't have to get hurt. You shouldn't have to um, get something, get burnt in order to learn. You know, it's, but I guess that's the ignorance of human nature. What happened in Tokyo was probably a combination of Buster Douglas putting on a career performance when he did everything right, plus a Mike Tyson who took an opponent lightly. We saw what happened when somebody hit Tyson back, but there's been much discussion since that Tyson's handlers or corner men were of little help. You can have the best fight man in the world in your corner. If you're the fighter, don't take the initiative and go out there and do what you've been taught and what you know. It's, I mean, it's a foregone conclusion. There's nothing you can do about it. It's still he that has to fight. He recognizes that. It's no one can... And one thing about boxing, you can't call time out and send in a substitute. It's now apparent, you know, from that fight, that the corner is not qualified to, you know, to work with the fighter. The team they have now is, is an abortion. It's ridiculous. Snowell, Bright. If that's what they believe, that's what they believe. They're on the outside looking in. They don't really understand the workings of what's going on. You got different people around that don't know, they don't know nothing about it. Jay doesn't know nothing. I mean, Jay's just around. Jay's a mouthpiece. He's a mouthpiece, that's all. And he, so he says a few things, but he doesn't know. He, he never really experienced it. You know, that's between Michael and myself. That's what happened in the corner, and that's, that's something that transpired between Michael and myself. They were scared. They were, they were you know, they were scared than Mike was, because they don't know what to do. Contrary to what everybody says, we are ultimate professionals. And changes have been made for this fight in the Mike Tyson corner. Let me introduce you to two of our guests right now. On my far left is Michael Marley of the New York Post. And on my immediate right here is Wally Matthew of, uh, Matthews of Newsday, uh, the men who cover this game for a living. And Wally, I'll start off with you. Richie Giacchetti's been added to the Mike Tyson corner for this fight. Is he the answer? Is he the cure? Well, I don't know exactly if he's the answer. If there's anything that Richie Giacchetti will provide to Tyson, I think it's going to be motivation, or as he puts it, motivation. If, um, I don't really think there's much you can teach Mike Tyson about boxing at this stage in his career, except maybe to reestablish some fundamentals that may have gotten lost along the way. But if there was anything that was missing from the corner in Tokyo, it was cheerleading. These guys were whispering to Tyson, and he was losing nine out of nine rounds before he got knocked out. 
Uh, I think he needed a little bit more than that. They all do. I mean, ask Angelo Dundee what he's done in the corner with Ray Leonard. Mm -hmm. Well, Michael, what about uh, Rooney? Is he the answer? Is George Benton the answer? We've heard that uh, King approached George Benton. He said no, but he said he'd love to have George in the corner. So we're, is it a, still a state of tumult there? Is it? Well, I don't think the corner, I agree with Wally uh, partially. I don't think, the, and I, I disagree with him also, I don't think the corner makes that much difference. Mike Tyson lost that fight. He's the one that got knocked down, got knocked out, lost his title. That was Mike Tyson's performance, and I don't think there's any magic that Jacchetti, Snow, Bright, uh, Eddie Aliano is in as the cut man now. Right. Eddie Aliano knows how to stop a cut, but if Mike Tyson gets hurt or gets cut, he's still got to win the fight, and a fighter at this level is not going to depend on the corner too much. Well, I'll ask both of you guys, and we're going to talk more about tonight's fight in just a moment and tonight's opponent, but, I mean, the future for Michael Tyson, he's only 23 years old. He's got a long way to go. And is this corner situation all set from what you hear? Is it all set? I don't think it's safe to say that at all. I mean, if he does not have a real good performance against Tillman, who knows what might happen? And I just want to clear up one thing. I don't think Mike Tyson lost the fight in Tokyo because of his corner. I just think he needed a little bit more of a push from them. I don't know if maybe he was quite aware of how badly he was being beaten, as silly as that may sound. Mm -hmm. You don't think that uh, Giacchetti or somebody could move him up, make him... You don't think there's room for him to be a better fighter? I do. I think there's always room for improvement. But as I say, I don't really know what Richie could teach him. I mean, you he know, he's not going to make him into a, a Larry Holmes-type jab, or mm -hmm. Tyson does what he does. He goes out there, he slips punches, he lands power punches. If Richie can instill those fundamentals, you know, Mike Tyson has not done a lot of the things that brought him to the top, not for his past three or four fights. And if they can remind him how to do those things, then the corner will be of tremendous value. Well, the idea for him is obviously to, talk, to make a uh, negative into a positive, lessons mm -hmm. to be learned from Buster Douglas and what happened in Tokyo four months ago. We'll be back with a lot more from Las Vegas after this. Welcome back to a CNN Sports Special in Las Vegas, where Mike Tyson makes his first comeback step in just a couple of hours now. Tyson had not only an aura of invincibility, but the proof that he couldn't be beaten, consolidating all three heavyweight titles. But he was stunned by Buster Douglas. It was a humbling, sobering low point. And I talked with him at length about how he intends to put himself back together again. Every now and then you need your ass whipped, you know what I mean? You get back on top of things. There is definitely a dent in the legend, and Mike Tyson knows it. And now that he's had four months to swallow the first loss of his professional career, he realizes it was almost inevitable. Well, you get sloppy more. Like, people say, um, Mike Tyson has all these personal problems and they don't affect him. But, you know, it's really not the personal problem. It's the aftermath of the personal problems. You know, things, you know, going to court and it um, forbids you from being active as possible and stuff. And then the longer you stay away from fighting, the long, it's harder it is to get back. When you're young and you're coming up, you're so full of life and enthusiasm, and you want to show the world you, what you know. And then once you get there, even more so, then it starts to die, and you lose perspective. And you start to do everything instinctively. You know what I mean, you lose the whole perspective of what it took you to get there. So Mike Tyson's gone back to work, trying to find the building blocks to put it all back together again. Physically, he's ready because emotionally his pride was burned and he doesn't want to ever get embarrassed again. I find it very difficult, it's very hard like, to go out somewhere and you know, because people don't look at it, oh you lose it, look at it, wow well, Mike, you know what I mean, what you are, who you are. And you know, I like sometimes when I go, I like to get a pizza, I like to get the ice cream and go and walk the streets. You know, whoever, you go out, you know, and that's very, it's very uncomfortable, very difficult for me to do that. But Tyson says the worst part is having people feel sorry for him. The last thing he wants is pity. And he says the last thing he feels is pressure. Um, I was telling you, my girlfriend was telling me, she said, Mike, do you feel pressured? Mike, you're in a very pressured situation. Well, how do you deal with that? You know what I mean? And I was saying, believe it or not, that isn't, it affects certain people differently. And, you know, from not being champion, I feel a great deal of pressure taken off me, but you can still feel the aura around you, you know, when you walk the streets. You know, I never, I used to never think about it. You know what I mean? The pressure's kicking you in the butt you want it back. Yeah. To get back the title, Tyson has to strip away some layers of ego and make the adjustments. And that takes wisdom to know if he's headed in the right direction and guts to jump off and do something about it if he's going the wrong way. But for now, when Mike Tyson talks about the realities of life in an unreal world of boxing, he sounds more believable. 
it's not the real world. We go to, we go to work when we want to. We do when we want to. We get paid one night. We get paid. You know what I mean? We live, we live around for as long as we want to. You know, but you, and that, that's good. You know what I mean? It sounds good on paper. But the real objective is to take all of that, and then now you're ready for the world when it's all over. So if boxing burns character in the soul, then defeat reveals it. You know, um, it's funny because I really never know how much I like this sport at all. This is a hell of a game. This is a hell of a game, man. So now, Don King is asking us to welcome the new Mike Tyson. No longer Iron Mike, the fighting, destroying, knockout machine, but Mighty Mike, a mature young man who's learned how to win by learning how to lose. A young man who's become centered. Well, I really believe I don't have to prove anything. I proved it for four years, you know what I mean? Three and a half years, whatever it was, you know what I mean? There's nothing I have to prove, you know what I mean? Being the ex-champion takes a great deal of pressure off you. You look at him and you see his demeanor, you see his smile, and you hear him on the stay in the day saying, that, I'm having fun, I'm having much more fun now than I did before. Before I was uptight, he said, but now I'm having fun. They, they've made Mike Tyson now come back to the group. He's an ordinary fighter. And on his best days, he can be unbeatable. On his worst days, he's beatable. And that's wrong. Unless he goes back to Kevin Rooney, I don't think he'll ever get back to that greatness. He could regain it, yeah. He could. What's the, what's the saying? You can never say never. Michael could be 100% better than he is. Than you've ever seen him. Anytime you want to be the best in the world and you strive to be the best in the world, anything, there's going to be disappointments, there's going to be setbacks. But you know what I mean? I'm not the kind of guy that says, oh, God, it's the end of the world. I'm, God, I'm happy. I'm Mike Tyson. I mean, at this particular moment, there's nothing I could change that I was the the best fighter of my generation. Michael, let me ask you. Mike Tyson says that Bill Caden, he dropped him because he's condescending and cold. Now he's with uh, Don King. Who calls the shots, and does King help him or hurt him in the long run? Yeah, I think in certain respects, Mike, Michael uh, Gerald Tyson calls his own shots. When it comes to business and uh, what match to take, I think that uh, he defers to Don King because that's Don King's forte. But again, uh, neither Caden nor Rooney nor Jacobs nor D'Amato or... You know, uh, the strife between Caton and King and Tyson and Caton and Rooney, I mean, I'm really sick of all the sour grapes with the other guys. Bill Caton's still getting money. He's still getting his 20% share, and he will until February of 92. You know, he's just taking uh, these cheap shots. Uh, Mike Tyson lost the fight. You know, the answer goes back to Mike Tyson. Is he finished? I don't think he is. It's possible, but I don't think so. I mean, he's going to be 24 soon. He could be, if he is finished, we won't find out against Henry Tillman. We'll find out when he fights another sure. top fighter. You see well, let's hear from you on that point. I mean, is this, uh, you hear one thing from King, you hear another thing from Caton and from everybody else. Uh, Tokyo and beyond, is there still a Mike Tyson left and will he be a better Mike Tyson? Well, it's certainly too early to sell it, to say it. Let's face it, uh, some fighters have lost devastatingly and come back. Joe Lewis was knocked out, became a great fighter afterward. Donald Curry was knocked out and became ordinary. Anybody that writes off Mike Tyson on the basis of this is out of his mind. But by the same token, anybody that tries to downplay it is out of his mind also because it wasn't a fluke loss, it wasn't a decision loss, it was a beating. And a lot of times fighters don't come back the same way from those. But what do you see in him as a person? You see growth and maturity. Was it a matter of too much too soon? Here's a guy 20 years old when he wins the title, he's making millions of dollars. What, what else could we really expect? Well, that's, you know, it's a natural outgrowth of success that people get bored with it. You know, it becomes too easy, and Mike Tyson has said this. He says, I didn't respect the championship. I didn't do the things I had to do. Hey, let's face it. He was not challenged in just about any of his 37 fights. What made him think that number 38 would be any different? So you can excuse a young man if uh, he goes into a fight maybe thinking that his natural skills will carry him through. Now, he may learn a lesson from it, or he may be really damaged, and we will not know it against Tillman because Tillman's really not a threat. But he was definitely looking beyond Douglas. No question. Yeah, but, uh, you know, I disagree with Wally about uh, Tyson. T I don't think he take, took a beating in that fight until the last couple of rounds. He almost knocked the guy out in the eighth round. In fact, that he was looking for that one shot. He landed it. And as Douglas was going down, I didn't think he'd get up. Once you see him on the canvas, you saw how fresh he was. He was cognizant of what was happening. He knew he was going to get up. But Tyson figured he could belt any guy out. I mean, he called himself the baddest man on the planet. Now I think he's come back to the ranks of human beings and, uh, you know, he's fighting a, a lesser quality opponent again in Tillman. We're going to find out, but people forget. I mean, that fight was such a joke that certain journalists, including you, Wally, didn't even go to the fight. Well, it's interesting and I, to me that and, Mike and I, Marley... And, and I don't, you know, I don't blame Wally for that, but it, 
A lot of people didn't go. My, my paper question whether we should uh, spend the time and the money to Mike, go over I, there. But I, I, I really love sushi, knew, so I, I knew went. that you knew the newspaper business better than that, and you know that that was not my decision. Well. And I also recall that your prediction on the fight was Tyson and in a second round KO. In two. Well, we're, See, we're, I do read it. See, we're going to have our own fight out here before they have the main card out in the back. <laughs> hey, Richie yard Steele, here. where are you when we need you, man? I never we're fight gonna, lawyers. You can't. We'll take a break here and be right back with more from Las Vegas. Stay with us. Welcome back to Las Vegas, and we've all agreed that tonight Mike Tyson's not going to freeze because he's fighting a legend, and Tillman's not going to tell us much. What's the next fight for him? Do you see Foreman up the road, and, and how tough would that be? Styles make fights. Well, think? I think we see another interim opponent between uh, Tillman and Foreman for Tyson. Right. Hopefully somebody slightly better caliber, not to knock Henry Tillman because he's a good person, but he's not in the class of Mike Tyson in the ring. Um, after that, the Foreman-Tyson fight might be a complete joke, or it might be very competitive. What do you think of Foreman? I think Don King is making a huge mistake, and for a guy that's so smart, and with the track record of great promotions that he's had, and I mean, uh, you know, I want to see the full-scale circus. I'm sick of the sideshows. I want to see the battle of the ages, 41-year-old Big George against Iron Mike, oh, I mean, soon to be 24. They're going to blow it. if they don't. I mean, anything could happen. Tyson could lose. He could get cut. Foreman could look bad. There's the biggest jackpot and the biggest fight of all time right there. That should be the next fight that's for the, both that's George the fight and Mike, the public, I think. The public's begging to see We've that fight? We've heard that all week long. Well, you're talking about the general public or yeah, the boxing the general public. public? The general public begs for things oh. like that. The boxing public knows a little bit better, right. but I still think it's a tremendous attraction. Well, before we get away from Tillman, I want to ask you guys, Mike Tyson can't just win tonight. He's got to go out and wax this guy. That's be explosive, I mean, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. If he goes the distance, if he goes five or six rounds, if he gets hit more than twice in a row, I think that there are going to be a lot of people that will point at that and say Tyson's not what he once was. Down the road, Tyson and Douglas, he's got to do a lot of things different. We know that. Absolutely. First of all, you don't know if Douglas is going to fight to right. the same level that he fought. He's so hot and cold. If he does, it's not an automatic win for Tyson. In fact, he might be very, very hard-pressed to win the fight. What the about most Hol competitive match out there is Douglas and Holyfield. That's really the fight fans Stop. fight. But nobody, I, I mean, I'm hard-pressed to pick a winner. Toss right. a coin on that fight. But who's going to put this fight, a, a fight on the cover of a Time magazine or all over CNN? It's going to be Big George Foreman. He's the best promoter, PR man, talker in the business. How about Holofield? I know he doesn't have all of those qualities, but Holofield No, he, he deserves his shot. He's been the number one contender, I think, since 86. Uh, it's absurd. I mean, he deserves a shot at the heavyweight title. Apparently, he's going to get it, and we'll go from there. But in the interim, Foreman and Tyson could get a lot richer than they are we now. Agree, do we agree <laughs> the picture's right. a lot better now because of what happened in Tokyo? Absolutely. I think that a competitive heavyweight division is what we needed. You know, everybody said we want one star to emerge and really make something out of this mess, which is what it was. Right. Then Tyson came on and he was so dominant that it became actually boring to cover his fights. Now I think it's terrific because you've got five fighters, if you throw in Razor Ruddick also, and, you know, That's there right. are others on the way up who, who can win the title. Well, Wally, okay, thank guys. you very much for being here. Wally Matthews of Newsday and, of course, Michael Marley of The Post, that two was, boxing that a, pundits. That was a good prelim. You guys yeah. are good on the undercard, yeah, man. Yeah, good warm-up. We'll <laughs> try to move you up to the big card next time. We'll be back with more after this. Well, Fred, I think Marley against Matthews might sell a few tickets here in Las Vegas. Well, and it may be a fight that's going to last a little bit longer than the one we're going to see in a couple of hours. Tillman can't stay around. I mean, Tyson's going to just come out and hammer this guy, isn't I, he? I agree. He's got to win explosively. I agree with you there. And I mm -hmm. think Tillman's a blown-up cruiserweight whose legs are shot. If he's the kind of test and confidence builder, though, that Mike Tyson needs, so be it. But there's got to be better things ahead. Well, on top of that, this gives Mike Tyson a chance to get back into the big heat of Las Vegas and the bright lights right. and get himself into the championship frame of mind again. That's that's the intriguing part, and that's why there are so many media people here for a fight that is a colossal mismatch, and mm -hmm. that's why we're here. Yeah. So in less than a couple of uh, hours, we'll know how Mike Tyson's really dealt with the first real adversity in his professional career. That's why this night is important. We hope to have Mike Tyson join us right after the fight live on CNN Sports Tonight. George Foreman will also be with us, and we expect number one heavyweight contender Evander Holofield for live post-fight analysis on what happened. And you'll want to see what's going on, so I'll remind you that coming up within the next oh, 30 minutes or so, we're going to see George Foreman 
Foreman and Adelson Rodriguez fighting in the ring to be followed by Mike Tyson and Henry Tillman. You can check both of those out live on HBO television. And it's been a great ride here at Caesars Palace all week. The big windup coming up in a couple of hours. We'll see you on CNN Sports tonight. Until then, I'm Nick Charles. And I'm Fred Hickman. So long from Las Vegas.